and I was talking with an MBA student and I said, so, tell me a little bit about yourself. What is your greatest accomplishment? Which is an important place to start for your elevator pitch. Maybe that's something that you've addressed. Maybe you have, an, have had an opportunity to write down what it is that you've accomplished that you feel is most meaningful to you. So I said, what's your most meaningful accomplishment? He says, well, I graduated in three years. Me too. Me too. So I said, that's, that's really great. Well, there's, there's three questions that I have to ask you about your greatest accomplishment. Three questions to make your accomplishment meaningful to your listener. And here's the first one. Ready? So what? I graduated three years. So what? Me too. I know how to play the oboe. So what? Me too. Not really, but if I did. <laughs> Acting, what can I say? But think about it. I'm a painter. I'm a sculptor. I'm a dancer. So what? What does that mean that you can do with, through, and for others? When you're talking with someone about what matters to you, they want to know why. Why does it matter to you? Why did you choose to study theater at SMU instead of North Texas or Northwestern or wherever your options may have allowed you to choose from? Why did you decide to concentrate on sculpture instead of painting? Why do you feel that you're better at ballet than some of the other forms of dance? Why is the question that people want to know? I read a book by Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. It's kind of a business book, don't know if it's your cup of tea, but I really liked it because it says, hey, business people, you're telling everybody what you do and how you do it, but everybody wants to know why. And in the arts, it's vitally important. In fact, it's crucial that people understand why for you. And think about when you were a kid, what's the classic answer when you ask your mom or dad why? What would they say? Because I said so, but what's the first word? Because. because. That's right. Because is a very powerful word. Knowing your story is about knowing how to tell it. Because your story is something that's dynamic. It's going to be different your sophomore year, your junior year, as you go and you perform on the Bob Hope stage, as you do plays at the Greer Garson Theater, as you create sculptures, and as you go and do the things that you're going to be asked to do. Think about brevity. Think about the words that are going to help you most. Choose the words that will help you most. How do we know which words, Chris? They're the words that inspire the result you want from your listener. What is the outcome that is realistic and achievable? What is it that you want people to say or do when you're done with your elevator pitch? I want to talk to you about the loudest voice in the room. It's that critical voice inside your head. If you've ever heard that critical voice inside your head, would you raise your right hand, your other right hand? Yes. Your other right hand. Now, keep your hands in the air, okay? So I can see pretty much everybody has, okay? If you don't have your hand in the, where, in the air, I will, I will get you a little self-awareness a little bit later. So <laughs> now, if you've ever listened to that voice inside your head, if you've ever listened to that voice inside your head and not taken action because of it, would you raise your left hand up high like this? Now, take a look, and dance majors, help me out. What does this gesture signify? Surrender. Surrender. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. But watch this. If we can get just a little bit of motion, in there, do it all with me. <laughs> Look at that, oh man, it looks like you're cheering for me. Look at that, it's victory, it's celebration. You see, you can put your hands down now. You see, if we can get just a little bit of energy, just a little bit of energy going around our story, we can go from surrender to celebration. Is it really all that simple? Yes, it is, thank you very much. Have a great day, I appreciate it. No, I'm kidding, it's not all that simple. Wow, okay. See, you, you got, these guys are going, after my senior year, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that, too. <laughs> the stories we tell ourselves are critical, and they can separate surrender from victory. You have the power to tell your story. So let's work on that right now. Let's work on some things that we can do to tell your story. And remember, when you're, you know, when you're giving your elevator pitch, don't think of it as a pitch. Don't think of it as you're going to speechify somebody into submission or you're going to give a monologue. Hmm, please, back up the truck, Gunga Den. Don't. Just don't. Your elevator pitch is not in pentameter. So, 
What you want to do, though, is have a conversation. So how do the best conversations start off? With a smile. With a smile, right? With a smile. I, I do elevator pitch workshops. I did, I did some with the MBAs over across the street. And they forced me to go and watch people give their elevator pitches. And I said, I don't want to do this because people are going to be nervous. They said they won't be nervous. I said they will. Guess what? They were. So when people would give their elevator pitch, they would look at me. They would, they would go like this. You know, hi. My, you know, and the breathing gets shallow and everything like that. And it's like, look, just relax. The people that you're talking to want to hear your story. They don't want to hear it like this. They don't want to hear it like this. They want to hear it like this. So smile, be warm. And when you're in front of the camera, guess what? Think of that camera like your friend. Hello, old friend. <laughs> it's been so long. Think of the camera like your friend so that you are warm. Why? So that people can access your information, so they can get your status. If you're frightened or terrified or thinking, oh my God, I don't have anything to say, you better have something to say. Haven't you done the assignment so far? Sure. So what is it that you want to talk about? Your accomplishments, followed by those questions of, so what? So what? Because you've done this, what can you do with, through, or for others? And if you say, you know what, Chris, I'm 18 years old. Uh, the greatest thing I've ever done was play Conrad Birdie at Jenks High School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. But what is it that you would like to do? What is it that you hope to do? What is it that would be satisfying to you to do as an artist? And then follow it up with two things. Why? And how about a because? Really show what matters to you. And show what you can do with, through, and for others in a collaborative art form. Okay, so I said we were going to work on some things, so let's do it. Now, if I ask them to write, they're going to pop out their laptops. So here we go. Write down three. Accomplishments, characteristics, or things you hope to accomplish at SMU. And you may have already done this. You may have already said, hey, wait a minute, I got this on my assignment already. Okay, well, cut and paste. Cut and paste. But what are the three accomplishments? Yes, yeah. The three, the three are, what, are your, what are, are your greatest accomplishments? I have to check my notes. What are your characteristics? What are your most important characteristics? And, and by characteristics, I mean, what is it that I need to know about you? Okay? And then, the things you hope to do at SMU. Let me ask you, do you think it's good to start an elevator pitch by saying, hi, my name's Tom Smith, I'm an art major at SMU, do you think that that's, is that, is that powerful? Is that compelling? That's yesterday's news. That's yesterday's news. And in my elevator pitch seminars, I say, start with what matters most. And what matters most in the best elevator pitch is what your listener is thinking about. What can you do with, through, and for others? What is it that separates you from me, other than the sport coat, right? What is it that separates you from me, from her, from someone else who is also diligent, hardworking, that sort of thing. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard, isn't it? But how about this? Because I'm diligent, hardworking, and loyal, I'm very interested in finding out more about what's your major? Theater. I'm very interested in finding out more about what's going on in the summer program here at Steppenwolf. And I'd like to know, could we connect via oh, I don't know, Facebook, I've heard it's going to be big, LinkedIn, <laughs> right? Could I, could I, you know, could I maybe get a business card from you? Could we go have coffee and talk about? You see, the new elevator pitch is a conversation, and the best elevator pitch ends with an invitation, an invitation. It's not where you close somebody, can I join your theater program? Whoa, back off. <laughs> Hold on, killer. How about we create a relationship. You know, I always said that the best thing I ever did, that I ever made on stage, was a relationship. Better than any of the characters that I ever created, the relationship was what I always tried to build. And if that relationship was true and honest, the play seemed to flow from there. And I still try to do that today. So, if these words resonate with you, and what you believe in is similar to what I've said, or even it's vastly different, let people know what you believe in. 
and see if it resonates with them. So the things you hope to do at SMU can be phrased in terms of potential opportunities for you. What are you going to do this summer? What would you like to do this summer? And who are the people that could help you to get there? Who are the people that could help you to get there? I'll give you a concept. I know it's early in the school year, but I'll give you a concept. You ready? And I need a, I need a prop, like a good theater major. I need a prop, and here it is. So, back row in the blue shirt. What is this? It is an empty chair. That's exactly right. The empty chair represents the person or persons who you would like to come into your life to create the accomplishments that you would like to have at SMU. The empty chair represents the person that is not here now, but if they were, they might sit down and say, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what you'd like to do this summer. Tell me if you're interested in joining up with the Kitchen Dog Theater here in Dallas. Tell me if you'd like to visit my gallery. Tell me what you think of my aesthetic. Does it match up with yours? I understand from the dean that you've been working on your concept of what artistic integrity and aesthetics are, so tell me a little bit about that. The empty chair represents the person who, if they came into your life right now, they could <laughs> accelerate your dreams and your goals. We all have things that we hope to do, that we hope to accomplish in our wildest imagination, that life that would make us say, wow, wow, I can't believe, dot, dot, dot. Who can help us to get there? Nobody lives on the island of ballet, as I said before. It's all about collaboration. It's about the people that can help you. And right now in your life, you have an opportunity to put the talented professors at SMU in the empty chair. They want to know about you. They're going to ask about you through assignments. They're going to ask you to write down your elevator pitch. They're going to ask you to talk about what's important to you and what you've learned. But be sure that you talk with them as well about what it is that you aspire to do. Let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of the things that you hope to accomplish after SMU? That was, that was the things you hope, oh, excuse me, afterwards, the things you hope to do at SMU. What, what do you think, uh, beach t-shirt right here? Since I don't have name tags, I gotta call you out by what you're, what you're wearing. What, what, do you, what would you hope to accomplish at, at SMU? Uh, to get better at what I want to do. Which, which is? A you're a trombone player. And if you were to get, what would getting better at trombone, what would that mean? Would that mean you'd be better at theory, or would it mean, you know, just placement, or what, what does that mean? Just like taking practice and just uh, general knowledge, but it, uh, it helps you physically. Mm -hmm. Like carrying and stuff. Interesting, interesting. You know, but what about, what if you were evenly matched? What if, what if you and this gentleman here, who's probably not a music major, are you? Get out of town. <laughs> and for my next trick, wow. But I'm sitting here and I'm the, I'm the conductor. I'm the guy who does the, uh, the jazz orchestra here. You know, would you, are you guys in the jazz orchestra? You are in it. <laughs> and behind door number three. So he says, you know, guys, you're, you're pretty evenly matched and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be making a recommendation for whatever music group it is that you'd like to maybe intern with or work with this summer or something like that. But I need to know more, I need to know more about you. I mean, technically, you're very adept. And by the way, you know what people say about SMU art students? Technically adept. Technically adept. Welcome to the club. You will be technically adept by the time you graduate. Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. But you've got art. Do you have heart? What is it that matters to you? Because life is short, and we get to choose who it is that we'd like to work with. Wouldn't you agree? So what do you do when talent alone is not enough? What is your story? What is your pitch that's going to make sure that your elevator goes to the top floor and that you give yourself every possible advantage to stand out beyond the notes, the stabs, the rhythms, the talent for your talent. <laughs>